Hey everybody, Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com here. Welcome into this video editing tutorial. Today we're going to talk about drop zones in Premiere Pro and editing with multi-touch. So drop zones are basically, I think they were created to make it easier to edit with multi-touch, but you can edit with drop zones just using a mouse. I did break out the Microsoft Surface Pro so we can take a look at editing with multi-touch and some of the multi-touch functionality of Premiere Pro. I'm working with Premiere Pro CC 2017 at the time of this recording, the newest version of Premiere Pro. Without further ado, let's jump in and check it out. So I got this uh, blank sequence here and I have all of these clips over here. Now, when you're editing with a multi-touch device, you can select a clip or touch it with your finger and you get additional controls that pop up. So you can sort of mark in and out points and scrub through uh, the clip very, very quickly. You can fake multi-touch with a mouse. I'm just using a mouse right here by hitting this little flyout menu and choosing thumbnail controls for all pointing devices. Very cool. Now, if I select a clip, check that out. I get these mark in and out points uh, and then play. And, and if I hit the play button, I can speed through what I'm playing even faster. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, now let's just go ahead and take a look at the drop zones really, really quickly. And then we're going to jump into the multi-touch device. And that's where we'll really explore how all this stuff kind of works together. Uh, so drop zones, let me just drag one clip out here. Uh, and we got whatever, it's just a clip here on our timeline. And then let's say I take this clip and I want to place it on my timeline as well. Well, I don't really have to drag it to the timeline. I can drag it up over the monitor here and I get all these different drop zone options. One of them is insert. If I choose insert, it's going to insert the clip right where the timeline is and split the the underlying clip, right? And just push it out. So it's almost like I'm wedging this clip in between the original clip, right? You can see I just placed it right in there. Or I could do something like, hey, insert this before, and it jumps to the beginning of that clip and throws this entire clip before it. And the same thing with something like, you know, insert after. It can be a super fast way to work. And see now I've got this, this clip. So I've got the playhead over this clip, right? I could take another video clip and choose to insert before, and it's gonna place that video clip in between those two clips because it's placing it just before the clip which the playhead is currently sort of floating above. All right, I'm going to uh, just get rid of this. Let's take a look at the Surface Pro and uh, kind of some of the hands-on multi-touch stuff we can do with that. So first up with the Surface Pro, I want to go ahead and from my workspaces here, choose the assembly workspace. It's going to give me like a really nice big uh, project bin here. So I've got nice big clips. You can see here, all I have to do is touch a clip and I get those options that uh, are displayed. Uh, now, one of the things that we can do with this that's really cool is we can pr click the play button. But if we press down on the play button and hold, I can scrub through that clip and choose like, all right, let's go right there. And then I can hit this little icon up here in the top left to place the in point there. And I'll show you the importance of that in just a second. I can click and hold scrub over to like here and then I'll drop well, maybe I'll put it like right back there and I'll drop the out point right there you can see that I, mean, I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's a very very thin little blue line down there the blue stuff that's the part of this video clip that will be imported when we do something like hey let's click this bring it over there are drop zones again I'm just going to choose insert and you can see sure enough it places the clip right where the playhead is in our timeline a couple other really cool things you can do with uh, with multi-touch here in Premiere we can just grab grab our uh, our little playhead here and move it over I can pinch and zoom. So I can pinch and zoom here on this video to just zoom in and really take a close look at something if need be. I can pinch and zoom down here on my timeline. And like if I, if I zoom in a lot and I realize, oh crap, I'm way out here at 21 seconds, there's no footage. I can take two fingers and I can drag my timeline back. So I can quickly just kind of swipe through my video in a very tactile, hands-on way. Same thing here. If I just zoom out with my video up here and use two fingers, I can actually scrub through the video clip itself. So a very cool way to just just be able to go in there and take a look at what's going on. Uh, you can see there we've got our little clip. Now, uh, when it comes to the drop zones, once again, one of the things that we can do is we can just drag a clip over and we can say, hey, you know what? We want to overlay this clip. Uh, now, overlaying, as you're going to see, what it's going to do is it drops the clip on sort of the neck, the closest available audio and video track. So as long as the video has an audio track, it'll just be placed at sort of the closest track to that center bar. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit and uh, undo that placement. That's pretty cool that, that we know we have that, uh, the ability to do that. One of the other things we can do is if I drag the same clip and choose to, obviously the insert before and after are there, but we also have replace and overwrite. Replace, if I drop it over replace, what's gonna happen is that clip in its full duration is going to be replaced. Now, this clip here, if I just drag it out to the timeline, you can see that it's much longer than the original clip. We're not seeing all that because all that's happening is we're overlaying, or, or not overlaying, I'm sorry, we're replacing just that clip time-wise and everything. Now, if the clip that you're uh, dragging into the timeline or 
replacing with is shorter. So if the clip had been a little bit shorter, Premiere just fills the extra space with black. Not ideal, something you would have to go in and trim away, of course, um, but just know that that's going to be uh, what happens. So another thing here is you just you would use again two fingers to scroll up and down here in your video bin where your video files are sort of residing. Uh, nice to know because if you just click and drag with one finger, it's going to actually try to pick up that movie clip and move it. Which hey, that's great if we want to like drag it in and say look insert after insert after and even overwrite. By the way, these are a great way to throw clips into the timeline because they automatically move the playhead to the end of that clip, so you can very quickly bam 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 throw five six. 7, 8, 9, 10 clips right onto your timeline very, very quickly uh, as you go about editing and making changes and things like that. No, oh, by the way, over uh, overwrite, if you're wondering what that does, it's sort of like replace except it doesn't respect – oops, let's zoom in here. You can see here we can also zoom in on our um, – our video clips themselves. Uh, there we go. Let's see if I can get it to stay. There we go. Uh, let's grab this clip of, of the girl here. So we select this. Uh, maybe we set our in out point. Where's the in point? We'll go in point there and we'll go out point like right there, right when she walks off screen. And we're going to drag this over and choose overwrite. So overwrite is going to place the clip right where the playhead is and just smash and crush and roll over whatever bits of video uh, are on the timeline in front of it, kind of without with reckless disregard, if you will. It's not going to push clips out like an insert command would. The insert command kind of slips the video in and pushes everything else out. Overwrite just lays it right on top uh, just like that. So a lot of really, really neat things that we can do uh, with multi-touch. Oh, and by the way, maybe just as a, a final little tip, if we go to something like the color workspace here with multi-touch, one of the cool things here, the Lumetri color side panel opens. Up here in the little flyout menu, we can turn on, and it may already be turned on here if I can hit it, under panel group settings, we can turn on stacked panel group. What this is going to do is automatically collapse every panel except the one you've selected. So if I go to like color wheels, you can see everything else collapses. This is nice because I don't have to worry about scrolling, like go two fingers scroll up and down like a really long uh, sidebar that just opens and opens and opens and never closes. This means if I select vignette, everything else closes and just vignette opens. So. That can be really, really helpful. It can be really useful. Um, and multi-touch, really, when you're working on sort of that that touch-style device, it's not going to be something, of course, where you edit your next feature film, your next masterpiece. It's more or less something where, look, it's so easy in Premiere and with, uh, with uh, the media encoder – mind fart there for a second with media encoder to just quickly downgrade like super high quality footage to just like really low quality you know mp4s or something dump them onto a device like this and you can throw together a rough cut in the car in the plane while you're in the airport terminal waiting for your plane or if you just want to get up and get away from your desk and go out to the park sit on your couch whatever you can do it all very quickly and it's like very hands-on i don't know it's a different way of editing i'm not like a hundred percent ready to dive in and like, hey, this is where I'm doing even, uh, you know, a 20 percent of my editing. But it's kind of cool to mess around in. Um, and if I'm, you know, just throwing ideas around, being able to just quickly drag and swipe and drop, it's really neat. It's really easy. It's, it just feels right, if you will. Um, but it still needs a little improving. One of the things that I would like to see, for instance, is the ability to make the UI of Premiere Pro bigger, like maybe on a slide bar, um, just to make some of the tools and things easier to click on and use. Um, but hey, we're in the infant stages right now of uh, how this multi-touch stuff is going to work, but it's definitely really helpful with like a trackpad for Mac or on your on your laptop, MacBook Pro or regular laptop to be able to like scrub through a project very quickly with two fingers just side to side. So, so helpful and so easy to do. Um, really great to have that kind of thing. And by the way, a lot of Wacom tablets have multi-touch as well. So um, – Without, you know, droning on and on and on about this, definitely something I think you should check out, try out, play with it, see if you like it. Um, you know, or, oh, one other thing about working on uh, something like the Surface Pro, if you have like your own personal cloud server network set up at home, you could upload your files to that as long as you're pulling them through a pretty fast um, router. You'll be able to just move wherever you want within your network, and you can even just open up your actual Premiere Pro project file that you would be working on on your main station because it's there like on your own little server. Open it up, work on the file very, you know, naturally with your fingers, so to speak, uh, or differently maybe I should say, and then open it back up in Premiere Pro on your main machine and do the real work, the precision work because I still prefer editing with the mouse. So – all right, I got to shut up. I got to shut up. We got to close this thing down for multi-touch editing and drop zones, which you don't really need multi-touch to use or work with or any of that stuff. For all of that and one finger, two finger and pinch and zoom and everything else that you do with your fingers for multi-touch in Premiere Pro, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, touchvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.